Hello again, everyone. Well, we are now working on the icon. We're trying to get it plumbed in place. We have two things that we have to plumb in. We have to plumb in the water, and we also have to plumb in where the slurry comes into it. Dad's working on the slurry from the uh, impact mill into the icon. I'm working on getting a little bit of a manifold system set up so that we can bring water to the icon as well as taking it back to create the slurry. And then we'll have to bring in water from our tailings pond over there and pump it in place. The pump's down there somewhere. So that's what our job is here today. Let's see what we can do. So Dad's been working at getting the uh, discharge from the impact mill plumbed nicely into the icon. He's got it all set up. I see one, one joint is off at the moment, but that's just going to go on there. I think he might be gluing it at the moment. We got the manifold all set up. Glad hands to bring the, pipe, the water pipe in. The main big hose going in for the main unit. Then a small secondary one coming off to create the slurry that feeds it. Back to what Dad was working on there. We still have to seal that on there with some, you know, Gorilla Tape or something like that so there's no dust is coming out of it. And now I have just been down here working on getting, this is an old hot tub pump I think, a pool pump or something like that. Uh, working on getting it all plumbed in. We've created a special pickup down here. A floating pickup that uh, screens out anything, oh I think less than a sixteenth even, the screen that's underneath there. Because you don't want garbage going into the icon. There's another filter on the pump. And then there's also a filter on the icon itself. Where's that filter on the icon? Uh, right there. There's a filter on the icon. So we're getting there. We may even be able to get this thing fired up once today. Okay, we've got the manifold done and all glued up. We've got the slurry line ready to go. We have the hopper or the discharge hopper, slurry, whatever you want to call that. What do you call that little mechanism? Here? Yes, the the, the mixing valve. No, the, the slurry mixer. Okay, slurry mixer. The slurry right. mixer going. We don't have it sealed yet because Dad wants to see the water going through it before we seal it. And um, we have a, we seem to have a problem right here, Dad. It's open. So when the water comes in, we're what are we doing with this water? We're making a hell of a mess. We have the pump all going. We just tested out the pump and it uh, pumped out nicely. So we've got the discharge ready to go for it. I think we're all ready to actually put water through the icon the first time. We might want a bucket underneath it. Where do you want it? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Evan. My big helper. Okay, we're going to use this right now just to direct the water away from us. Now, do we know anything about setting the speed on that speed controller? Uh, I did not bring the book with me, so no. Watch we'll give it the power and we'll find out. So Dad and I are back at it again today. We had to go away and then come back with a new plan because the feed we had between the impactor and the icon was not working. It was jamming up and then backing up into the impactor. So we've created something new, a big crash box, if you will, that's gonna take all of the powder coming out of the impactor and then feed it into the icon. Let's hope design number two works. <laughs> we don't want a design number three. But that's our job today, to finish putting the impact back together and testing out our new 
design. We've also decided to feed water through the impactor to keep the dust down. Because that's what's coming back out the top no matter what. And Dave from 911 Metallurgist said, just throw water at it, it'll be fine. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we're just about to get going. We got water to the icon. We've got our feed water up to the top of the hopper. Uh, we don't have the lid on this yet because we want to see what's going on to start with. Uh, could get messy, but hey, we like playing in the mud. Uh, just about to fire up the generator and start pumping water up here. Woohoo! So now that we finished the run and shut it down and rinsed it off, we're just going to pull the concentrates out from underneath here. Ooh, I'll get the coat wet. Ooh. You can see there's, oh, what's that one? Ten cups? Yeah. Oh no, cups? Cups, nah. Yeah, you're 200, 200 to 300 milliliters of Two cups. <laughs> oh, five cups. Five cups of material. Little cups. Okay. So I'm just gonna go pan that out and see what's in it. The rain has started again. So as I said before, this is um, garbage material we we're putting through it. So I don't really expect much, if anything, in gold. Some of the some of the rocks did come from some mine sites, but they weren't necessarily good rocks from those mine sites. So anything we get in here for gold is actually a surprise. We're keeping the good stuff for once we get the everything tuned up just right. So as I figured, no gold in there, but you know, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, <laughs> not going to expect much if you don't put any good rocks in that have gold in it. Uh, I think we got things running well enough that our next run, we can actually start putting some gold bearing material through. You get a lot of metallics in the bottom there. Don't oh you? yeah, lots of, and I've, I've panned a lot of that away already. Uh. 
I repanned this out, or just re reconcentrated, and the, the sun came out for a second, and I realized that a lot of those glitters that I saw in there had a yellow tinge to them. So I just pushed all the yellow to one spot, and sure enough, it is microscopically fine. Let me refocus my camera so I can see it. So as I said, this is garbage material, but it did come from a mine site. And there it is, we got fine, fine, fine gold in here. Like this is crazy fine gold. I will take this pan home where I have a better camera and get a much better shot of this. And something to give you a size for, uh, frame of reference. The sun had to hit it before I could see it. Container for that pan. The container? Good. I'll take this home and get a really good shot of it. That first time I panned it out, I didn't even see any of that stuff in there. Not until I tapped it to the edge and then just used my finger to push it together, then I could see how much was actually there. That's crazy. Let's wait till the good stuff goes through. Let's see something interesting. Let's get the water off it for a second. Let it dry for one second, and then I'm going to pull the water back onto it. It should all float. Oh no, didn't get to float. Oh, there's gold floating away. Oh, I wonder if the camera caught that. Let's get some more floating away. Oh, there you go, some. Ooh, poof. Poof. That is fine, fine, fine gold. Here we are with some of the gold. And that gets down into some of the crushed up pyrites and whatnot. There's a fair amount of fine gold there. Let's see if we can find a dime or something to put in there for reference of size. You might be amazed at how small that is. There's that gold with a dime beside it to give you some scale. She's pretty tiny stuff. I got lots to separate out of this pyrite too. All over the place. Well, let's see if I can separate it, dry it, and get a picture of it when it's dry. Maybe even throw it under the microscope. So I was only able to recover about half of it out of those crushed pyrites. But there we go, there's about half of the gold. And that has come out to... 0.13 of a gram out of, oh, where's that light? 0.13 of a gram out of a bucket which was basically was one bucket of rocks and it's what I what I call garbage there wasn't very good ore samples in there but the crushers managed to liberate a lot of good gold I'm going to end off this video a little different than normal, just with pictures of the gold that we found using that icon I-150 from 911 Metallurgist. As you can see, it's beautiful fine gold, very, very fine, very, very fine gold. We have some close-up uh, snapshots with the camera, and then I uh, put it under the microscope. This microscope image is probably... Oh, I don't know, probably a thousand times magnification. It's a lot. And you can see that in, in there, there's also pyrites and some shelite as well. I didn't separate out to pure gold. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. There will be many more to come featuring these rock crushers and this icon. And don't forget to leave a comment of what you think about this uh, crazy endeavor I have going. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do, and don't forget to click that bell icon. Until the next video, bye!